Sorry for the potentially poor audio here. I don't have my mic set up right now, but I wanted to get this video finished so that I could hurry up and upload these uh, these updates. Um, so you might have noticed that the name of this particular package is now per layer camera culling instead of per layer camera clip clipping. That's because when I first started making the package, I was looking for a solution to change clipping planes on a per layer basis. And as far as I can tell, that's just not possible in Unity right now. So we end up using a, uh, a culling based solution to achieve the same effect. Really, it's the same package. It's just been updated. It has a few more bells and whistles on it that I decided to put in while I was uh, messing around with uh, with a few other things. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what's going on, I guess. You'll notice that this inspector hasn't changed at all. There's still the uh, reset to defaults button. There's still this default distance that uh, that's tied to multiple values until you you know, set them off a little bit, and then they they maintain their their own their own value. Reset to default just brings everything back in line. Um, one thing that has been added though are these these handy little gizmos here. So these gizmos are going to give us a visual representation of just what's going to be uh, called on that layer and what's not going to be. So. If I bring this uh, transparent FX layer back, anything on the transparent FX layer that's within this this uh, frustum here will be will be rendered, and anything without will be uh, be called. Pretty straightforward, just a nice little tool to give you a visual representation in the editor, so you can get an idea of what kind of distances you're working with. It became especially important because now I've added this uh, multiplier here. And some people requested this, so I decided to add a multiplier that you can use to change one value on the fly based on the platform that you're that you're on or the the device you're on. So you can use it as part of your performance control. It's the people who requested this, I think, were specifically working in mobile. You know, where you want to automatically. Uh, adjust things on the fly depending on the specs of the user's phone since you can have such a wide range of, uh, of users. And this too, uh, it's a little hard to do with the slider here, but it updates the visual representation to accurately reflect what's going to be called and what's not going to be called. So at 1, everything's at a scale of 1 for all these values. At 2, it's doubling the values. It's pretty straightforward. And it does have a minimum because there are certain limitations here. We don't want to go in beyond the near clip plane. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull this out to 150, 50, and 100. So you can see, as usual, the far clipping plane is updating to match the furthest, uh, the furthest calling distance that you have in this, uh, this list here. And and we can see that represented here. But it's 300 instead of 150. Obviously, this is because of the multiplier. And there are minimums that are tied to the uh, near clipping plane that you have set. So if I try to drag this multiplier down, you'll notice it goes to a very small number. And if we get in on this camera here, it takes the, uh, the, culling, uh, the culling distance with the the smallest value and uses that as its basis for making sure that this uh, this culling distance is never you know negative or or the same as the near clipping plane it gets right up to it but won't quite uh, won't quite quite wrap around and that's the biggest difference I've I've uh, I've implemented here so besides adding this this distance multiplier now all these values are self validating. And it also works during runtime. So originally, you had to set all your properties in the inspector and then just use whatever you had set in the game, which works really well on, uh, on desktop for the most part. Um, but of course, you can't, uh, you can't change things on the fly 
at all uh, after you've deployed, which is a, a bigger issue uh, for larger games or mobile games that maybe want to have different draw distances that are relying on this solution. So that's where this multiplier comes in. And while I was at it, I just made it so that at runtime, let's grab these, start bringing this in. Uh, at run, there we go, stuff is starting to disappear. So at runtime, you can modify these values through scripting and change them if need be if you're in a, an area and your frame rate starts to drop. Maybe you know you have a layer just for close details that don't matter. You don't have to see far away, you know, little pop cans or bottles or grass or something like that. And if your frame rate starts to dip, you know, that can be the first thing that you try to pull back and you can dynamically bring this down until you get to a reasonable frame rate or get to a certain, you know, minimum value of 50. And then you can start bringing other things down. Um, or you can just do it all at once with the uh, with the multiplier and bring that uh, that down slowly, you know, 0.5 or whatever. So there are a few options here now for dynamically uh, updating on the fly. The big thing here now is that all these values are going to be overwritten uh, within my script. They're all they're not they're not protected. Obviously, you can access them in the inspector, or access them directly. They're all public variables, but they're uh, they're being validated on the fly as well. So if you try to set your multiplier to negative five, it just won't let you. It'll just overwrite it with this uh, new minimum calculated value. Same thing with the the default call distance. You can't go below your you know near clipping plane plus 0 0.01, which is what the far uh, clipping plane uh, does on its own uh, normally. So that's what all there is to it, I think. Nothing else has really changed. You know, just showing your gizmos if you want to. You can uh, choose to to show that or uh, or not. Um, that's about it. This video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, and I'm uh, I'm tired. So I'm going to go to bed now. Get this all uploaded. Maybe I'll fix this video with better audio in the future, but maybe I won't. Hope you're all having a wonderful day.